This is the hater's guide to Harbor Freight. I know some of you may drive by Harbor Freight. You won't even look that way. You turn your head and you even shudder a little bit at the thought of seeing a Harbor Freight in your town. However, there are some hidden gems deep inside that store that I'm going to tell you about. And then I'm going to tell you which tools to absolutely avoid at all costs. So how do I know that a lot of people hate Harbor Freight? Well, all you have to do is go to Better Business Bureau and look and you'll see that it has an F rating with 473 complaints in the last three years. It also has a two out of five stars on SiteJabber with 162 reviews and a 1.6 out of five ratings on Trustpilot of 223 reviews. Most of those negative reviews and complaints are coming for two reasons customer service, and defective tools. So I understand why there is a little bit of uh, negativity or hatred towards Harbor Freight. But here are some basic rules to adhere to when you're looking at stuff in Harbor Freight. The more moving parts, the more consideration you should give to giving your money for that piece of equipment. But I do wanna address the elephant in the room, the price. Most of the stuff in Harbor Freight is way less expensive than anything else you're gonna find in most other stores. But there's a reason for that. A lot of Harbor Freight tools are built with cheaper quality plastics and metal, which we'll get into in a little bit. Before we get to the tools that I actually recommend from Harbor Freight, let me tell you about our website, 731bullbarks.com slash store. We have easy to follow build plans to help you make awesome projects. Like this ultimate tool cart I recently built, it holds a planer, a jointer, as well as multiple other tools. And we have plan bundles available that'll save you even more versus buying them individually. And if you use the code HFTOOLS, I'll give you 20% off any order, even the plan bundles, so go check us out. Here are the tools that I recommend from Harbor Freight. First and foremost is this. This hidden gem right here. This is the Bremen parallel clamp. I did a very extensive comparison review a few weeks back on the channel of parallel clamps. I had Jet, Bessie, Bora, Jorgensen, Irwin, Bremen, a bunch of them in there. And this performed very well. It wasn't my top pick, but for budget pick at about $35 per clamp for a 24 inch clamp, these are a steal and they work extremely well. Next are these Pittsburgh bar clamps. This is actually a 60 inch bar clamp. And while they are not super strong, they have their purpose. I've used these when I was trying to clamp up my workbench and I needed a very long clamping capacity to help pull those together. And I hooked two of these together and it was able to do that. I've also used them when I was building my flags because they have that flat bar right there. And while you can't generate a ton of clamping pressure on these, they work extremely well for those purposes. That's why I recommend these because they're only about $20. Just understand you're not getting a ton of clamping pressure with these but they do serve a very good purpose for a very cheap price one way you can actually beef these up is you can cut a piece of wood to slide inside this channel here and that really gives it a lot more structure i've seen people do that before i've had these for gosh probably five years and never had any issues with them i use them quite often when i need a large clamping capacity now, i've got more tools than just clamps but there are really good values there these are eight inch pittsburgh hand screw clamps these have a ton of uses in the wood shop i've shown that before in a previous video you can use them for holding small parts at the drill press, setting up a vice, a vertical vice at your workbench, using them for stop blocks on the router table and tons of other uses. These are a very good value to only about $8 a piece. They're also pretty similar in quality to the Tay Tools brand, which I actually prefer. But if you're in Harbor Freight, these are an excellent value. And last but certainly not least, our F-style clamps with a caveat is don't get them much larger than these six inch. Now at $3.50 a piece, most days, unless there's a discount going on. These little F-style clamps at six inches are excellent value because typically you're not clamping down a lot of pressure on these. And what I've noticed is on the longer clamps, like this 36 inch clamp, when you start wrenching down on them, it starts bending. And because this metal is actually soft and thin, this one's actually still bent even after applying fair amount of pressure to them. They just don't hold up well. I've had this Irwin clamp for about the same amount of time as the, the Harbor Freight clamp. It's still not bent. It's held up extremely well. Just for longevity and uh, better clamps, I would steer clear of the longer F-style clamps. Even this uh, 12 inch clamp is significantly bent after a couple of uses. So just be careful with those. Some of my other absolute favorite things to get from Harbor Freight are organizational items, especially the magnetic stuff. So like these magnetic trays here, you can get these super cheap and they come in a variety of colors, but these are great for putting loose bolts or screws in when you're working on something. And what I really love to use them for is to put my bits in. That way you keep all of your driver bits in one place. 
especially on my tool wall over there that's already metal, so this will magnetically stick to that tool wall, and then all of my bits are right there in plain view. There's tons of other magnetic accessories like these hooks that you can buy, stick it to the bandsaw, your table saw to keep your push stick nearby, or just hang up a tool that you're always using right there. Also, this magnetic drill driver holder, this is really great if you have a chest style toolbox, you can hook it over it and then keep your drills and drivers really close, super cheaply, like 20 something dollars. They also have a magnetic bar that you can screw to the wall where you can stick your wrenches or screwdrivers, chisels, things like that. And last but not least, the paper towel holder. That thing is awesome. It just magnetically sticks to metal and I'm always needing paper towels in the shop, so it's good. Notice all of these things have zero moving parts, so that's why I like them, because it's very hard to mess something like that up. And another thing I would recommend for light duty use are their wrenches. If you just use them around the house here and there, they'll be perfectly fine. Also, if you just need a paintbrush for putting on stains or other shop furniture, things like that, then the paintbrushes from Harbor Freight are perfectly fine. Now, if I'm painting something that I need a finer finish on, then I will actually go to Sherwin-Williams or somewhere and get Wooster brand or one of the top tier brands because the bristles in the Woosters don't fall out as easily as those from Harbor Freight. And the last thing I want is a finished project with a bristle stuck in it. Now, as far as power tools go from Harbor Freight, again, the more moving parts, the more I would actually dig into the reviews and be more considerate. However, the Hercules line, especially the Hercules uh, miter saw, seems to be a very good value. I know someone personally who has one, has had one for a very long time, and really, really likes it. And if you compare it to the DWS 780 from DeWalt, they look almost identical. I would be really surprised if they're not really, really close as far as they're either a direct ripoff of each other or they're coming out of the same factor, you tell me. Also the Bauer line, especially the planer that they have for $379 is almost an exact replica of the Craftsman planer that I reviewed a few weeks ago. I wouldn't have any hesitation on recommending that if for light duty use. In other words, once every month, a weekend a month, something like that, you're just gonna use it to plane down a few boards. It will work just fine. Now these are the tools I would absolutely avoid at all costs, or at most costs anyway. Just depends on what you're doing. Measuring devices, specifically squares and rules. Now I know some of you may give me a little pushback on this, but check this out. I took two rules off their shelf and laid them side by side, put them on top of each other, and over the length of 36 inches, they are a 16th, almost a 16th off from each other. That's just randomly grabbing two off the shelf. That tells me all I need to know about their rules. If you want a really quality rule at a lower cost price, Benchmark makes some really good ones from Tay Tools. They're just really good, really accurate. All of them are the same. I like that. I'll link to those in the description if you're interested. The tape measures are probably okay if you're just gonna use one tape measure in your shop. If you're gonna have multiple tape measures in your shop, I would highly recommend FastCap, actually. As far as squares go, maybe they're okay, but I just don't trust them. I know that Swanson brand makes a very good quality square at a very low price, and I've used them since 1995. So I have zero issues with Swanson. I know that they're good quality and they're always gonna be accurate. That's why it's hard for me to recommend a, a Harbor Freight brand that may or may not be accurate versus a Swanson that I know for a fact is gonna be Personally, I would avoid Drillmaster or Chicago Electric brand tools. And if you're gonna be buying power tools from Harbor Freight, I would steer more towards the Bauer and Hercules line. The Chicago Electric's okay. They just, they look cheap. You can tell they're made out of cheap plastics. I just would highly recommend steering clear of those if you're able to. If you compare the Drillmaster and Chicago Electric to something like a Bosch router, you're gonna be way far ahead if you just save up another hundred bucks and get the Bosch. A lot of times the Bosch goes on sale for 20% off on Amazon, and you're just gonna get a, in my opinion, a better quality router that's gonna last you many, many times longer uh, be more accurate. You're gonna have less issues with that router. Uh, plunge routers, all that stuff is just, you want to go with a known quality brand on stuff like that for woodworking. Now there's one thing that I would absolutely avoid at all costs from Harbor Freight, and that's going to be their chisels and hand planes. The metals that they're gonna be using in those, the reason they're getting them at such at a very cheap price is because the metals are inferior to those that you can find in the brands like Narex. They're gonna be really high quality uh, metal that's gonna stay a lot sharper longer on the Narex line, two cherries, that sort of thing, versus what you're getting at Harbor Freight. Now you're paying pennies on the dollar for those, but they're not gonna hold an edge. You're not gonna get that clean cut. And if you're using a chisel, for anything fine woodworking, then you're gonna want a sharp edge that's gonna give you a clean cut because you don't, last thing you wanna do is mess the project up at that point when you're using the chisel. If you're using a Harbor Freight one just to rough out something, that's perfectly fine. But I would just actually avoid those at all costs. Another thing I was absolutely unimpressed with was the Hercules job site table saw. Now, if you have one of these and it works well for you, please comment below and let me know. 
but I just checking it out in the store. I didn't cut anything with it, but just the way the fence worked, the way it was uh, just kind of sloppy when you moved it and then you locked it down, I don't trust that that's gonna remain square at all times. So personally, I would steer towards a table saw that has a rack and pinion fence, something like the DeWalt job site saw, and there's others out there as well. Also, the router bits in Arbor Freight look super cheap as far as cost goes, and I would assume that they're using lower quality metals. I would highly recommend going to something like Whiteside or some other brand that you can get online or maybe in your local stores, but those are gonna last you a lot longer. In other words, they're gonna stay sharper longer. They're gonna produce a cleaner cut with less burning. Listen, when you use those like roundover bits, chamfer bits, that's getting close to the end of the project. So the last thing you want to do is have a bunch of tear out because of a bad bit. It's just bad business. So Harbor Freight hater, did I change your mind at all about some of the tools they have available? If yes, let me know in the comments. If no, let me know why. If you like this video, you'll love the video where I compared this Harbor Freight parallel clamp to a lot of the top brands on the market. You gotta see it. Click in the box right there, it's gonna get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also, another one of my favorite videos right there.